welcome ladies and gentlemen to video number 232 and uh, today is uh, lecture number 6 on Keynesian economics in a series of uh, lectures on introductory macroeconomics so let me start with the basic introduction of uh, Keynesian versus new, new classical economics uh, I'll start with Keynesian economics that uh, emphasizes on uh, aggregate demand and uh, it basically uh, follows the Keynes law that demand creates its own uh, supply and firms produce output only if they expect to sell. Uh, in comparison, uh, new classical economics emphasizes on aggregate supply and uh, their basic tenet is uh, uh, says law of uh, markets that supply creates its own demand and uh, it also emphasizes a hands-off approach because of the belief that the economy will correct itself in the long run. So aggregate demand in uh, Keynesian analysis, the Keynesian perspective as I mentioned earlier focuses on aggregate demand and the idea is very simple farm produce output only if they expect it to sell while the availability of the factors of production determines the nation's potential GDP, the amount of goods and services actually being produced and sold, that is the real GDP, depends on how much demand exists, ex uh, exists across the economy. So real GDP is determined only by aggregate demand, not aggregate supply. So you must remember this point that in Keynesian economics, real GDP is determined only by the aggregate demand rather than the aggregate supply. Uh, there is a concept of disposable income and disposable income means income after taxes. That when you deduct uh, your person taxes from your income then you can dispose of your income and that is why it is known as disposable income. Inflationary gap. It is the equilibrium at the level of output about the full employment GDP or the potential GDP. Interest rate that is the payment for borrowed money. Uh, then there is recessionary gap or deflationary gap uh, in uh, Keynesian economics, and that is the equilibrium at the level of output below the full employment uh, output or potential GDP. So, what determines consumption expenditure? Consumption expenditure is uh, spending by households and individuals on durable goods, non durable goods, and uh, services. And Keynes identified three factors that affect consumption that is disposable income, expected future income, wealth or uh, credit. Uh, spending on new capital goods is called uh, investment expenditure or uh, business uh, expenditure. Keynes treatment of investment focuses on the key role of expectations about the future in influencing business decisions and there are expectations of future profits. Interest rates also play an important role in determining how much investment a firm will make. These are the determinants of aggregate demand. Reasons for a decrease in aggregate demand uh, that is consumption, rise in taxes, fall in income, rise in interest rate, desire to save more, decrease in wealth, fall in future expected income and regarding investment, fall in expected rate of return rise in interest rates, drop in business confidence and there are on the right hand side you see reasons for an increase in the aggregate demand and uh, under consumption uh, there, are, there is decrease in taxes, increase in income, fall in interest rate, rates, uh, desire to save less, rise in wealth, rise in future expected income and uh, below investment you can see rise in expected rate of return, drop in interest rates, rise in business confidence. Uh, there are also some other uh, reasons for a decrease in aggregate demand regarding government expenditure, reduction in government spending, increases in taxes, net exports, decreases in foreign demand, relative price in increase of uh, US goods, reasons for an increase in aggregate demand, government, increase in government spending, decrease in taxes, increase in foreign demand, relative price drop of uh, the US goods. 
So the core of Keynesian analysis is the coordination argument that is downward wage and price flexibility requires perfect information about the level of lower compensation acceptable to other laborers and uh, market participants. And then there is expenditure multiplier that is the Keynesian's concept that asserts that a change in autonomous spending causes a more, a more than proportionate change in real GDP. We also call this consumption multiplier. And uh, then we have macroeconomic externality, which occurs when what happens at macro level is different from and inferior to what happens at the micro level. An example would be where upward sloping supply curves for firms become uh, a flat aggregate supply curve, meaning that the price level cannot fall to stimulate aggregate demand. Many cost. These are the costs firms face in changing prices and sticky wages and prices is a situation where wages and prices do not fall in response to a decrease in demand or do not rise in response to an increase in the demand. The basic building blocks of Keynesian analysis. Keynesian economics focuses on explaining why recessions and depressions occur and offers a policy prescription for minimizing their effects. The Keynesian view of recession is based on two key building blocks. Number one, first, aggregate demand is not always automatically high enough to provide firms with an incentive to hire enough workers to reach full employment. And second, the macro economy may adjust only slowly to shifts in aggregate demand because of sticky wages and prices, which are wages and prices that do not respond quickly to decreases or increases in demand, we will consider these two claims in turn and then see how they are represented in the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model. Uh, the Keynesian assumptions in the aggregate supply, aggregate demand. The original equilibrium of this economy occurs where the aggregate demand function A D naught intersects the aggregate supply. Since the intersection occurs at potential GDP Y P, the economy is operating at a full employment. When aggregate demand shifts to the left, all the adjustment occurs through decrease in the real GDP. There is no decrease in the price level since the equilibrium occurs at Y1. The economy experiences substantial unemployment. The expenditure multiplier. Keynesians believe that a small change in economic activity cycles repeatedly through the economy and has a larger impact than the initial dollar amount spent. A change in aggregate expenditure circles through the economy, households buy from firms, firms pay workers and suppliers, workers and suppliers buy their goods from other firms, those firms pay their workers and suppliers and so on. Expenditure multiplier the ratio of the change in GDP to change in aggregate expenditure which caused the change in GDP, the multiplier has a value of greater than 1. Marginal propensity to consume. It is the percentage of an increase or a decrease in income which one spends or reduced spending, also known as the MPC, that is marginal propensity to consume. Uh, marginal propensity to import is the percentage of an increase or decrease in income which one spends or reduces spending on imported goods. Marginal propensity to save is the percentage of an increase or decrease in income which one saves or reduces saves in savings. It is also known as the MPS. The sum of MPC and MPS is always equal to 1. Keynesian economic policy, uh, contractionary fiscal policy, which are efforts to decrease aggregate demand through tax increase, increases or government spending cuts. And then there is expansion, expansionary fiscal policy, which are effects, which are efforts to increase aggregate demand through means such as tax cut, cuts to stimulate consumption and investment or direct increases in government spending. And then there is GDP gap, the difference between the actual and the potential real GDP. During, rece during recessions, the gap grows. During the booms, uh, the, during the, booms uh, the gap decreases. 
the GDP gap is defined as the difference between potential and the actual uh, GDP when both are measured in real terms. When the economy falls into recession, the GDP gap is positive, meaning economy is operating as less than potential. When the economy experiences in, uh, an inflationary boom, the gap is uh, negative, meaning the economy is operating at greater than potential. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this was a brief introduction about uh, the Keynesian economics. In my next video, I will uh, discuss the new classical uh, economics or the new classical analysis of uh, uh, income and output determination. I thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I would like you to, sus to subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed yet and uh, do not forget to click on the bell icon so that you can get notification about my other videos that I will upload for you uh, in the near future. Thank you and uh, you can also share uh, this uh, channel and this uh, video with your friends, with your colleagues so that they can also uh, get uh, benefit from watching this. See you in another video. Thank you.